Good evening. Before we start, I do want to say a word of gratitude and thanks to all of the people who have worked so hard for these Holy Week services. I started with Palm Sunday, and today, tomorrow, and then Easter. It takes a lot of you, uh, your prayers, and a lot of your work to make this all happen, so thank you for that. With nightfall, our Lenten observance comes to an end, and we gather with Christians around the world to celebrate the three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. At the heart of the Monday Thursday liturgy is Jesus' commandment to love one another. As Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, we are called to follow his example as we humbly care for one another, especially the poor and the unloved. At the Lord's table, we remember Jesus' sacrifice of his life, even as we are called to offer ourselves in love for the life of the world. Tonight, we begin the great three days of our Lord's passion and death and resurrection, the journey from the supper table to the cross, from the cross to Easter dawn. We are followers in our Lord's way, exploring his truth, encountering his life. This is the night when Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would betray him. This is the night when Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the night when Christ our Lord gave us this holy feast that as we break the bread and drink the cup, we may here proclaim his holy sacrifice and come at the last to his table in heaven. This is the night when Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet showing us how to honor and serve one another in love. This is the night for watching and prayer. We give ourselves freely to the demands of these great days, confident that those who die in Christ will surely live with him. Let us stand and sing. Jesus, I have promised to serve you to the end. Remain forever near me, my master and my friend. I shall not fear. Who follow you? 
seated. Let us pray together. We remember Peter, who refused to believe that Jesus would have to suffer and die. We, we remember, remember those times when we refused to admit painful, painful truths. We remember Mary, who in an extraordinary act of generosity, covered the feet of Jesus with expensive ointment. We, we remember, remember those, those times when we held back from giving generously to the needs of others. We remember Jesus, who washed the feet of his friends. We remember, we remember those times when we have missed opportunities to be of service to those around us. We remember our Lord taking the difficult road to Jerusalem. We remember those times when we have been called to a challenging walk choosing instead to do or say nothing. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, our suffering servant and Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I came not to judge the world, but to save it. The good news, therefore, is this. In Jesus Christ, we are loved, forgiven, and saved. And for that we can say, thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. And we sing. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul?
first gospel tonight comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, beginning at the first verse. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, You will be blessed if you do them. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now. Where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. As it says on the overhead screen and in your bulletin, all are invited forward. Uh, We're not doing the washing of the feet tonight, Uh, and I've done that too. But in our society, it's more the washing of the hands. We wear shoes, whereas in the day of Jesus, they wore sandals or were barefoot. And so it was their culture and their custom that when they came to dinner, um, usually a servant girl would wash their feet uh, before they would have dinner. So for Jesus to take the role of servant and female, and to do this was powerful, a powerful lesson for his disciples. Today, some of your leaders will be washing hands, which is how we clean ourselves today. So I invite you all to join us.
we sing? The second gospel lesson tonight is from the 26th chapter of Matthew. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? Jesus replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, He gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. 
the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. If you knew that your dinner tonight was going to be your very last meal, what would you do? What location would you choose? Who would you invite? What food would you eat and what drink would you choose? I suspect that a lot of us would want a beautiful setting, perhaps in the mountains, or at least a view of the mountains, or any one of the many beautiful places that this world has to offer. We probably would invite our loved ones, our family members, and our special friends. And we would order and eat all of our favorite foods. And that dessert we've been saying no to would probably have that too. And partake of the finest wine, whiskey, even water. Colorado has the best water in the world, you know. And what would we talk about? We'd share memories, laughter, love. Now, we don't know when our last meal will be, but Jesus did. And he had a plan for the entire evening. He knew, or he chose, that this Passover meal would be his very last. And he chose to be there with his disciples. Being deliberate, Jesus being deliberate, I think makes this even more special. For some of his disciples approached him and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for the Passover meal? And as I read this passage, I was thinking, what about the logistics of this? It's Passover, for goodness sake. The city is packed. It's like trying to find, well, a room in the middle of an event a hotel at the beach during spring break, a table at a restaurant Mother's Day weekend, or finding a room of sufficient size, especially on a short notice, well, that would concern me. So when these disciples asked how they can help make the preparations, it's a serious logistical question. And Jesus had the answers and he had the solutions. He replied, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. Or another translation, my appointed time is near. And tell him, I will keep the Passover at his house with my disciples. Now Luke writes that two of the disciples helping with the preparations were John and Peter. The Gospel of Matthew doesn't identify the names of those who are helping and we don't have the name of the man hosting the Passover dinner. But we still understand the importance of the planning. The details had been worked out by Jesus. that They weren't revealed until the last moment. Have you thought of that? He didn't tell them until the last moment where they were going to eat and what they were going to do, how they're going to celebrate. If anyone asked, Jesus could have responded, well, Peter and John, they've got it sorted out. They're taking care of it. And can you guess why this might be? Who might be the most curious of what the plans were for Passover? Any guesses? In the verses right before what I read, in Matthew 26, Judas makes a deal to betray Jesus. And it goes like this. Then one of the twelve the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and asked, what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? So they counted out for him 30 silver coins. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. After the place was chosen, after the food was prepared, in the evening the disciples were told where to gather, and they came together for that shared Passover meal. Now, this part of the story is familiar to us because the church continues to celebrate communion, beginning with the words, and the night in which he was betrayed. At LCM here, communion is offered each and every Sunday. 
It's part of our heritage and part of our practice. And this was deliberately put into place by Jesus himself. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. In several other Gospels, including what I read tonight, Jesus said, I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Jesus had looked forward to this meal with the disciples, but he knew it would be the last time that he shared what we call the Lord's Supper with them. Using broken bread to signify that his body will be broken for the forgiveness and for the restoration of sinners who are accepted by grace into the family of God. Drinking from the cup, signifying a new covenant, which points to the sacrifice of the blood of Christ, poured out freely, poured out willingly, for the forgiveness of sin for all. Jesus knows that he will not be with the disciples living in this world much longer, and yet he's offering them all he has to offer himself and his love and his life. Should we be needed to be reminded that perfection was not a part of the disciples' psyche or DNA or morality? Right there in that room, while they were eating the Passover meal, before Jesus offered him the bread of life and cup of blessing, Jesus said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And naturally, they became greatly distressed. And one after another said, it's not me, is it? Surely not I, Lord. I'm not going to do that. And Jesus went on, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. So it was the custom in the Middle East, and still practiced by some there, to take a piece of bread or a piece of meat wrapped in bread and dip it into a bowl of sauce that's there on the table. And the sauce is made from stewed fruit. And then you eat it. And in that culture, as among Arabs today, to eat with a person sharing the same fruit was tantamount to saying, I am your friend, and I will not hurt you. You can trust me. And so in this honor-shame society, for Judas to break these rules and to shame himself, to shame his rabbi, to shame his friends and his family was despicable. The disciples must have gasped to hear the words that someone that was eating there with them in that room, sharing their meal and their hospitality, that this person would be the betrayer. Judas, who had already betrayed him, he had already received the 30 silver coins. By making the deal with the chief priest, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. And Jesus replied, You have said so. After Jesus offered the Lord's Supper, they sung a hymn, and they went to the Mount of Olives. There Peter proudly confirmed that, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I love Peter and that ego of his. And Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, this very night, before the rooster crows three times, you will have disowned me three times. And what did Peter say? No, nope, not me. Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the disciples said the same. Peter was so sure that night that he would not let the Lord down. And on this night, on this Monday, Thursday, are we as sure about ourselves? Some of us are as bold as Peter, sure that we will always honor our Lord and Savior. Others of us understand that every time we sin, every time we say something to hurt or don't say something that could help, Every time we don't do what we can to lift someone up or we do something that harms, with every sin, we are dishonoring our Lord and Savior. And here's the thing. Jesus still shared that Passover meal with Judas 
with Peter and those disciples and then shared with them the bread of life and the cup of blessing, knowing that there would be betrayal and denial and sin. Their actions are not what made them worthy to be his disciples and to eat with him. They were worthy because of Jesus and the words and actions of Jesus. And the same is true today for you and for me. We are not worthy because of what we say and do or don't say and don't do. We are worthy because of the life and love and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. All that we have and all that we are is from God and dedicated to God. And for that we say, thanks be to God. Amen. Jesus shared meals with all kinds of people, doubters, believers, and skeptics, 
rich and poor, leaders and followers, scholars and fishermen and tax collectors, palm wavers and parade watchers. He calls us all to come, taste, and see that God is good, that there is enough for everyone, that there is another way. This is the table where all kinds of people from all kinds of places and all kinds of times meet. This table does not belong to the Lutheran Church of the Master or to this congregation alone or to me. It belongs to Christ, and he is the one who promises to meet us here. This is the table where we can begin a journey, where we can make a turn, where we can be strengthened for the road ahead. So come, not because you understand, but because you want to know God more. Come, not because you love God a lot, but because you love God a little and want to love more. Come, not because your faith is unshakable, but because you could use some strength for the journey. Come, not because you are already perfect and worthy, but because it is Christ himself who invites you to share in this feast. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
May this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace from today to life everlasting. Amen. And we pray. Only I can't see it. Okay. O God of silence and sound, we give you thanks for this holy meal that is celebrated by Christians in all times and places. We go now to give ourselves to others, seeking to follow Jesus' new commandment to love one another. In his name we pray. Amen. We have our final song, and then afterwards, if you'll just stay seated, and we'll have the stripping of the altar at that time. Shun not suffering shame.